you there, boys and girls. It's time for flipping class. Today we're going to talk about marine regions. Thank you guys so much for getting in there at the last minute and watching this thing. Remember, you do have the chances to stop, pause, rewind, rewatch, double rewind, super rewind, and slow it down if you want to. So do it. You'll notice that we just have the little camera today because the big camera over there ran out of batteries. So go with me here. We got marine regions, and there are three of them. So we're going to talk about the three marine regions first, and we're going to dive right into continental margins a little bit. So here's a map. You can see the map up here on your screen, and it shows you the different uh, marine regions. There's three main regions. There are mid-ocean ridges. They're in the middle. That's why we call them mid-ocean ridges. And there are also uh, continental margins. Here's an example of an active one. Here's an example of a passive one. We'll talk about the differences between those and the parts in a second. And then there's also your abyssal plain. And those are essentially your three main parts of the ocean. You have continents, so you have the continental margin, you have the abyssal plain, you have the rift valley in the middle. So let's dive on into continental margins now, as if continental margins weren't hard enough already. They have three parts. So here are the three parts of the continental margin. You have the continental shelf. Now this is the relatively shallow part of the ocean. What that means is uh, you will drown in this part of the ocean less than the other parts of the ocean. It's usually you know, still hundreds of feet deep. Then you have the continental slope. Here's the continental slope, all slopey like And you can see it's got a very steep slope. After that, that's really where the continent sort of breaks away. And you're getting away from the continental crust, as you can see down here. And now we're into the oceanic crust. And moving on out towards the abyssal plain, which is our next ocean region. So we'll cut it off right there. Moving on out towards that, we have the continental rise, which is the part where the continent is rising up out of the abyssal plain. So we're rising up out of the abyssal plain. There is the rise. There are the three parts of every continental margin, the shelf, the slope, and the rise. So let's talk about the shelf first. Continental shelves, they're relatively flat, 2 to 3% grade. Uh, just to give you an idea of what steepness that is, most really intense parking lots, not like the one at Lowe's maybe, are under 2%, like 1 to 1.5%. They usually go start with a shore break, where the shore breaks, and then uh, they pretty much just go out in a very predictable manner. So uh, what is kind of fun, though, is they usually have lots and lots of deposits all over them. So there's lots of things to discover. Where would those sediments come from? Well, they would come from up here in the land region. And so you can guess that over here, if we're looking at the continental shelf, which is extending out to here, then you can see that you would find different types of rock deposits from this region. You could also find different kinds of sandy deposits from this region, different organic deposits from over here and over here. And so you can actually tell, based on the deposits that you find on the ocean floor, you can actually tell what type of beach used to be there, and you can tell sort of the geographic and geologic history of an area, which is fun. So we're going to spend a lab looking at sediments later. Here's a picture. It's a map. It's showing us another continental margin. So you can actually see here's Florida being all, you know, Florida-like. There it is. And then you can actually see the area that they have in lighter color here. This is actually showing you how far out the continental shelf, how far out the continental shelf goes off of Florida. You'll notice down here, it doesn't go very far. I wonder why that is. So you can see the continental shelf, then you can see the uh, slope, and you can see at the end where the slope uh, deads off. Then you can see the rise out there in the ocean. So there's our continental shelf. Here's another example of a continental shelf, and you can actually see on the picture here where you've got this really big, like, fallout area right in here. It's a really big, just steep drop where it goes into the abyss. If you were to fall into the abyss, obviously you'd be down in the abyss. So over here you have, again, the continental shelf. It was over in this region here and then it goes all the way out until it drops off the edge of the world. So there's our continental shelf, two examples. Again, a nice diagram just sort of sums up. You have the continental shelf. Over here, that would be the shelf break, where it breaks, and you just slide woo, right down the slope, and then you may have another break out here due to turbidity currents, and that would be on your continental 
rise. So now that you've been uh, continental margin parted to death, let's focus on the slope. The slope actually are very, very similar to mountain ranges. I mean, these things are massive. Very similar to mountain ranges. They usually have a two to three degree slope, not percent, but degree. Very, very steep. And they usually have those uh, submarine canyons, like you guys made in your sand castles. You're usually going to find those in the slope as well. And because of that, they have what's known as a high turbidity. Turbidity is a really weird word. Usually it's for like muckiness, just kind of your general uh, grossness of the water. If the water has a high turbidity, it's usually flowing very fast, and there's a lot of sediment inside of it. If you have a lot of sediment in there, then it tends to turn the water very uh, dark colored. So here would be an example where you've got you know, your shoreline up here, and then here is the uh, sand being moved down. Here is your continental shelf, and then over here is showing you the slope. Very, very steep, steep like mountain range. You can actually see here's the river flowing down here, and it's actually carrying uh, into a canyon. It's actually carrying all that sediment, cutting down the side, making a big uh, turbidity current, which actually you can see right here is the results of that turbidity current right there. So it's just carrying all this uh, sediment. It's just stuff that you can see it's going on the bottom. So it actually is a lot denser because it's choked with mud and sand and stuff like that all mixed in. Just like if you add a bunch of salt to water, you can actually make the water more dense. Same thing here, you add a bunch of sediment, a bunch of water soluble stuff, and you can make canyons such as the Grand Canyon. Here's another example. This is a nice computer generated diagram. You can actually see here we've got our continental slope. And you can actually see we've got this really nice canyon that's starting up here even in the uh, even in the shelf. We can see it really opens up over here. Over there in the slope. So there's an example of showing what the turbidity current will do. And it'll go just like that along the bottom and take sediment with it. Let's talk about that formation a little bit. Remember, it starts on the slope. And the turbidity current will be full of what we call imaginatively turbidat deposit. Turbidat deposit is what has the turbidity current is carrying. It's full of turbidite. It's just like all that nastiness. And it can be just sort of a, just a bunch of mess. And what actually happens is the continental slope can actually become too steep which causes the water to slide down it very fast and actually creates like an underwater mudslide. And that underwater mudslide is what's called the turbidity current. The sediment inside of it is turbidite, and when it's deposited, it makes turbidite deposits. Good example of our turbidite deposit, as shown here, they actually have the ability to make deep sea fans, just these underwater fans of sediment, and most of which has come from this area here. Some of it even comes from up here on the shore. So you can imagine that most of this is coming from the shore where the steepness actually starts cutting it here to the point that it'll give way and cut back, back up into the continental shelf. The uh, turbidity current flows down, 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 down the slope and then deposits everything in the rise there's a deep sea fan full of derbidite deposit. And as you can see down here at the other end of the board, it actually goes in a specific order. You can actually see it puts the big ones because they would be heavier, they would be uh, falling faster. And then the little ones that have more of an opportunity to float, the floaters, they could be deposited last because they're hanging out. It takes a little bit longer. Here's another example showing you that same uh, graded bedding. You can see you've got the bigger stuff at the bottom medium stuff, and then little stuff at top. So you can actually see, if you go back down, you can see that once upon a time at layer A, there used to be a turbidity current occurring. And then, so, you know, other things like a, you have a laminating that's going to be uh, from limestone, so you're going to have a lot less, uh, more gentle de deposition area right there. So that's the turbidity current. Let's focus on the rise. All right, the rise is our transition zone between the ocean and, you know, the land area. It tends to be a very messy area full of deposits, and this is where, again, we're going to find our graded bedding, which, one more time, is not just bed that, oh, you did a good job making that bed. It's like this. Your graded bedding is where you see zones of gradation, like your gradient big, medium, little guy. 
so we'll color code it this time. We got big, medium, little guys. And it'll do that over and over again every time that the it'll do that over and over again every time that the current flows through. So you can sort of think of it as depositing in wave after wave after wave. And that's what results in graded bedding. And again, you'll find those in the continental rise. So here's another picture showing you our turbidity current. There it is coming off. It's fed by this river through the shelf. Really picks up steam here on the slope and then is deposited on the rise. Here's a nice picture. This is actually taken with a submarine camera and you can actually see uh, the turbidity currents flowing through it. There's multiple and you can actually see the deposits, which is fun. Two good examples of deep sea rises. Uh, the Indus fan, which you guessed it comes off the Indus River in India. And also the Bay of Bengal has the Bengal fan, which is, you guessed it, coming out of the Himalayas in Bangladeshi type areas, mostly out of Tibet, coming off of Ganges River. And so these are huge rivers that are coming out of the Himalayas. They literally carry all kinds of debris through the area. The Indus fan is pretty good. The Bengal fan, and you can see it right here in the picture, it is bigger than India. Sorry, really not a super small country. So you can see the fan, there's actually more sediment deposited in the fan down here than there actually is land in India, which is just silly. Now in class, we're gonna talk about the different types of active versus passive uh, margins, just to give you a good idea of how they look like, and then we're gonna do another mapping lab.